Okay, now I'm, I'm going to talk about the supplies that I have right now with me. As you would have seen in most of my videos, this is the sketchbook that I use in almost every single tutorial video. This is my favorite sketchbook. And this one is by the brand Brustro. And you would have seen this. I would have shown this in most of my videos. This is by Brustro. And the paper is actually quite thick. If you see here, see the paper is quite thick. And if you can, you can buy the same notebook. And just make sure that the paper is thick enough. And yeah, if you have any any kind of notebook, you can follow along with me if you want. And as for the pencils, I'm using these um, Now Neat Yuva. It's actually Now Neat Yuva, but it says fun because it's a very old pencil. I've been using it for so many years. I don't even remember when I bought them. But these are the Now Neat Yuva pencils. You can find them on Flipkart and Amazon. I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. You can find the link in the description. So these are the supplies that I'll be using right now. And these three colors, I'm going to blend these three colors together and show you how to create a very nice even blending. Can you hear me? So now, first of all, you need to sharpen your pencils. That's the main thing that you need to do before we do any kind of drawing. We need a sharp pencil and this is just a normal normal sharpener that i use all the time and this one is the apsara long point sharpener and you can find it in any store near you so this is just a normal sharpener and i'm going to sharpen the pencils now i would have done that uh, before starting the live but i just wanted to show you um to how much of a fine point you need the pencils to be you see that it should always be this sharp when you start your drawings so just make sure that you have a very sharp pencil in hand and I'm going to sharpen the rest of the pencils. I just made a section right here and this is what we are going to do. I'm going to blend these color pencils within, these, within this section. Okay, and the top part is going to be the orange and the middle is going to be yellow and the bottom is going to be green. Okay. Now I'm going to start with the orange pencil first. And this is our first layer, the first base layer. This is our first layer. So I'm holding the pencil way back as you can see because this helps you to, um, to put a lot less pressure on your pencil. It won't allow you to, um, uh, what can I say? It's very easy to blend this way. If you hold your pencil close like this, then it restricts your movement as you can see. I cannot move much more than that but if i hold the pencil way back i can move to a wider range as you can see that's why you should always hold your pencil way back because it helps with the movement and also it takes away a lot of pressure so i'm holding the pencil way back like this and i'm going to start with the first layer as you can see i'm not putting any pressure i'm very gentle and i'm trying to go in the same direction for this particular layer. i'm going in the same direction And that's it. I'm going to cover almost one third of the section and then I'm going to move on to the next pencil, the yellow color. And I'm going to start from the center and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in the same direction for this pencil as well. And now I'm overlapping the colors as you can see. But I won't go all the way. I'm just going to stop here. Just half. Just half of the orange. I'm going to cover a half of the orange. And that's it. And now I'm going to do the same thing for this one as well, for the, for the lower area as well. That's it. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the green color as well. I'm going in the same direction. That's very important. I'm repeating myself again and again. You need to go in the same direction. Don't change the direction for your base layer. And I'm going to overlap the yellow color just a little bit. And that's it. Now for the second layer, I'm using the same pencil. I'm not sharpening it yet, but I will be sharpening it later. 
For the second layer, you need to change the direction a little bit. First time with the orange color, I went from this to this, kind of like this, but now I'm gonna change the direction. The same pencil. What this basically does is that it cancels out the previous layer's strokes, the pencil strokes, and also you can see a difference in the second layer. See, you can see a difference right here, no? Uh, the pencils are quite streaky along this direction right here, but since I added the second layer in some opposite direction, you can clearly see that the grains are getting quite filled up. That's what we need to do now. Then I'm going to go down. Done. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow color as well. As I told you, I'm changing the direction for this yellow. And now I'm actually going up. I'm overlapping with the orange color a little bit. And now for the same, I'm doing the same for the lower area as well. I'm overlapping with the green color, as you can see. Done. And now I'm moving on to the third color, the green color. And as I said, I'm changing the direction. I know I'm repeating a lot, but you need to change the direction. Done. This is our second layer. And I'm going to repeat the same thing again for the third layer as well, but this time, I'm going to put a little bit more pressure into my pencil so that I can get kind of saturated color. And as you can see, I'm changing the direction to my previous layer. Not the first layer, but my previous layer. For the previous layer, I went kind of went from like this, but this time I'm going like this. Now you can now you can see that this area is actually getting quite um, saturated and concentrated in color. I'm gonna continue doing that. And again, I'm not putting too much pressure on my pencil. I'm very light, I'm very gentle. Not too much, but just a little more than the previous layers. Um, I'm bringing that into the yellow color. I'm overlapping with the yellow. And one more thing, as I overlap with the yellow, I kind of lift off the pressure from my pencil. I just let the pencil glide because we don't want any harsh lines. When the transition occurs, we need to be very gentle when the transition in the transition area. So just be careful with that. And that's it. Now for the yellow, I'm doing the same thing. Again, changing the direction and overlapping with the orange. And then coming down, overlapping with the yellow as well, so green as well, I'm sorry. Hmm. Again, green color, just another direction. I don't know what this is, I think there's come some kind of a dent in my paper, I don't know why. But yeah, let's, let's move on. So if you notice in this area, this area tends to be the pure color, I mean the orange color itself. But this area will be the transition area. This is where the orange kind of starts to turn into the yellow color. And again, this is our transition area where the yellow just 
kind of turns into the green and this is a pure color and as for the yellow the pure color region will be quite small because there's a lot of transitions happening both um, on top and, and at the bottom so the yellow color region will be quite small when compared to the orange and the green color so i hope this is clear so hi uh if you have joined sanjana garg priyankshu sharma and am i am i telling that name right priyankshu sharma and yeah this is actually this is a video about how to blend color pencils together so if you want you can follow along with me you just started so just to uh, tell you a recap i just started with the base layer i started with the orange color first and then the yellow and then the green i'm i'm repeating the same steps again and again so it will be easy for you to understand so don't worry okay now let me continue i'm starting with the orange again this is actually quite sharp you know you know why that happened is because i'm rotating the pencils from time to time i'm not going like this i'm actually rotating the pencils like this see when this when you do this what happens is that the point the sharp point tries to remain the same it tries to remain sharp for a long time so this is a really good tip so you can note it down and now i'm going to start again again i'm going to change the direction you can you can clearly notice that with every other layer with every another layer you can see the colors becoming much more saturated isn't it and the grains of the paper are much less visible they are getting filled quite pretty pretty quite pretty quick <laughs> see see here this area is much more darker than this area right that's the power of layering you know you want to try anything realistic you should be layering a lot and this is also one of the reasons i'm not putting any pressure at this point i'm just letting paper and letting the pencil glide along the paper so no pressure at all just just a little bit to lay down the color enough to lay down enough color and that's it not too much pressure and now for the transition area for the transition area you need to keep in mind to lessen your pressure don't put too much pressure in the transition area just let the pencil glide along otherwise you you will have a streaky transition and we don't want that that's it and now for the yellow color again changing the direction for every single layer going into the transition now again the same thing for the green color as well going into the transition and then the green color just remember to lighten your pressure in every transition area I'm repeating that a lot but that's really important and that's why I'm saying it again and again. Hmm. 
now now the pencils are quite dull but well i can do with that but i'm going to sharpen this And then again i'm going to change the same i'm do the, i'm going to do the same thing again and again but every time i'm going to change the direction and this time i'm going to go in with just a little bit of pressure just a little not too much and since i sharpened this pencil you can clearly see that the grains are getting filled a lot quicker than in the previous layer and that is why I always told I always tell you to use a sharp pencil this is the main reason because it fills the grains of the paper so much quicker than, than a blunt pencil because this paper is actually quite thick you know I think it's around 160 or 200 gsm I don't remember that I think it's 160 and this is a quite thick paper and also it has some texture in it so whenever you're using a textured paper like this, you should always use a sharp pencil. If you don't have this kind of a thick paper or if you don't have this kind of sketchbook, then if you have any classmate drawing book that is readily available in a store near you in some supermarket, you can also use that because I've, I've already used that in previously when I was just starting out and that is a really good sketchbook instead of using a normal sketchbook that has some thin paper like A4 sheet instead of that you can use a classmate's drawing book going into the transition area I'm lightening the pressure again and again that's it now again the yellow one If you don't remember which direction you went the previous layer then just try to go in some random direction and see sometimes when you go in the same direction as the previous layer you will get a grainy result you can see lots of grains in the paper and that way you can know that it is in the same direction suppose you forgot the direction go in the uh but what am i saying <laughs> If you, for, if you forgot which direction you went to the previous layer, then try going in some random direction and see if it gets too much grainy. If it gets grainy, then you're going in the same direction again. But if, if it happens, if the grains just disappear, then you're going in some opposite direction. Now into the transition area. Well explained. <laughs> Thank you. And then with the green color, again with a little bit more pressure than the previous layer.
So now we are down about four to five layers, four to five layers. I don't remember exactly, but you can clearly see that the colors are getting much more saturated, right? And that's the power of layering. I, I, I've said it again, yeah, but you need to layer a lot. And now again, again, this time you can clearly see that I'm not, I'm not adding too much pressure, just a little bit pressure. But you can clearly see that this area is becoming much more saturated. The grains are much less visible in this particular area. You see, this is what we want to achieve. You can do that just by doing this. You see, even if you put a lot of pressure, you can get quite a solid block of color. But that's not what we're looking for. When you're going to blend your colors together, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't put a lot of pressure into your pencil. Even though this is a very good way of blocking the colors, it's definitely not useful when it comes to blending the colors. So avoid doing this, avoid putting pressure onto your pencil. We don't want that. You need to work in layers and we need to be patient because it takes a lot of time. Now it's blunt. I have to sharpen it again. Am I clear? Can I can everyone understand what I'm saying and doing? Thank you, thank you Divya for responding. Then again, the yellow. Then again, the green color. In, in my previous video where I showed you how to blend two colors together, I told you to overlap the colors a lot. Remember? Because when you overlap these two colors a lot, that's when you get the smoothest transition. So you need to overlap the colors a lot more than you think. Even though I marked this is the transition area, you can see that I'm overlapping quite a lot, more than that. In this area, you can clearly see that I'm overlapping more than this area. The more you overlap, the better the transition is going to be. Thank you, Chandra Kams. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I'm clear. Thank you. I'm happy that I'm clear. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Divya. You see how quickly this gets blunt? These pencils are quite, the, I, I love these pencils by the way, by Navneet. These are Navneet Yuva color pencils, as I told you in the beginning. These are the best, I think. Yeah, these are the best because I've been using them for years and I really love them. They are so creamy, you know. And again, I'm starting with the orange. And also keep in mind, with, within these three colors, yellow is the lightest, right, in terms of color. 
yellow is the lightest so no matter how much you use yellow i mean no matter how much you overlap yellow uh, it won't it won't make much of an impact it won't damage the transition much but if suppose you add too much of orange or too much of green then it will ruin the transition so just be careful with the darker colors than the lighter ones you see I can I can I can even go up here with this yellow. It won't it won't damage anything. But if I just do anything with this orange, if I just come a little bit way down into the yellow, it's going to make a difference. So you need to be very careful when it comes to the darker colors. And then again with the green, I'm going into the green as you can see. Even if I do this, it's not going to change anything because this is the lightest of all the of the three colors. This is not going to affect too much. But this, if I, if, uh, let me just show you. Instead of talking, I just show you. You see, I'm going to go, I'm going to bring this green up here. You can, you can see that. You can see this area is becoming much more greener. Didn't you? You can, you can clearly see that when I use green too much in this area, it, it is showing up as more green than yellow. So you should always be careful with the darker colors. Arimator. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just repeating the same things again and again. So you'll catch up. <laughs> Thank you for joining. And now, sharpening them. Now I'm going to start with the orange again and this time my pencil strokes are quite quick. They are not as wide as before. They are short and they are quick and that's because I want to fill out the grains of the paper now. And again keep in mind I'm going in some other direction than the previous layer and I'm going to fill out the grains of the paper now. Again, I'm not adding too much pressure to my pencil, just, just very gentle, very light-handed and a lot less pressure. Now, you can see that this area is getting saturated. That's what we want now. We want to saturate the colors. We are now in a stage where we want to saturate the colors. And be very careful in the transition area. As I told you, if you add too much of the darker color, it could ruin the whole thing. It won't look like the colors blend together smoothly. It will look like some streaks of color. You don't want that. So be very careful in the transition area. That's it. Now again, the yellow, I can see lots of grains in the yellow color and that's because my pencils were blunt at one point of time. So I just have to fill out the grains of the paper now with the yellow. Now as you can see, I'm adding a little bit pressure only in the middle part of the yellow, only to this section, I'm adding a little bit pressure, but as I move up, I'm going to lessen my pressure. I'm not going to add too much pressure now. And that's because we are going into the transition area. You don't want to rush it. You just want to you just want the transition to happen naturally. So instead of putting too much pressure, just a little bit pressure. And then going in to the orange. So if you have any questions, you can ask me if you don't understand anything or just anything. <laughs> if you want to know anything, you can just ask me now. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom section as well, bottom section of the yellow color as well. Now 
not too much pressure just remember i'm approaching the transition area so a little rest a little less pressure than before and as to how, how to hold your pencil you can hold it any way you want any way you feel comfortable you can hold it there is no one single thing about how to hold your pencil so you can hold them whichever way possible you can hold it like this you can hold it like this you can hold it like this whatever you want just make sure that the pressure is controllable you can control the pressure that's the main thing Do the same thing with the green color. Just a little bit more pressure now. I don't know what happened to this area. It is, I think, it is dented. I don't know why, what happened. I'm just gonna go move on. As I told you before, be careful with the darker color. You can ruin the blending in just in just one stroke. So just be very careful with the darker colors. That's it. Now we are almost at the final layers. You can clearly see that the grains are much less visible. They are filled not completely but they are filled so approaching the final layers and then again with the order. this time i'm going to put a lot of pressure in my pencil and you can see the difference in just a minute see i'm holding the pencil way closer to the nib I'm holding it like this because I'm going to put a lot of pressure now. See? Now, see that? That is getting intense. That section is getting intense, right? I'm going to continue to, 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 I'm going to, continue to do that. I'm putting a lot of pressure to my pencil. And again, I'm going in some other direction than the previous layer, not the same direction. Just keep in mind, it is very important to change your direction. If you don't change your direction for the every other layer, you're not going to get this kind of result. You need to keep changing it. No matter how many times I say it, you have to listen because that's the only way to get smoothest blending. See, see this area, that's what you want now. If there is any background noise, just ignore it. I can't help it. I can't change the environment. So if there is any background noise, just ignore it. now we are going to approach the transition area and the pencil is blunt again i'm going to sharpen this again and now for the transition area i'm not going to put that much pressure as i did in this one i'm going to keep my pencil very light i'm going to keep my hands very light not as much pressure as the previous one Sorry, not as much pressure in this section. I'm just very light, lighter than that. Because you want to fill out the grains of the paper. 
But at the same time, since we are approaching the transition area, we need to be careful. Uh, and also I'm rotating the pencil. If you can notice, I'm rotating the pencil a lot. That is going to help with keeping the pencils sharp for a long time. And that's it. I'm going to stop using orange for now. And then again, I'm going to sharpen the yellow. And I'm going to put a lot of pressure now. This is the pure color region. So this region is going to be saturated with yellow. So now I'm going to put a lot of pressure for the yellow pencil, except the transition region. I'm not going into the transition just yet. I'm only focusing on this center region of the yellow color. As you can see, as I uh, press the pencil too much, you can clearly see, I don't know if you can clearly see that, but <laughs> there is a lot of dust coming from the pencil in this area. When I do this, you can see these uh, dust is going to come out. And that is because the grains of the paper, I mean the texture of the paper is getting filled. It's getting filled to the brim with the pencil. So this is natural. All the dust is actually natural and we want that in the final layers. That way we can make sure that we are adding enough pencils to the paper. And now, as you can see, this region is now saturated with the yellow color. Right? And then I'm going to slightly go over this region. And I'm going to slightly, just slightly, because the pencil is blunt, I don't want to go over the top. I'm just, just a little bit. That's it. I'm not going to touch the transition now. I'm going to do the same thing for the lower area as well. And then I'll move on to the transition. Doing the same. Putting pressure to my pencil. So you can see I'm rotating the pencil. Mm. And now as you can see, I'm not gonna I'm not going to touch the transition just yet. And now for the green color, I'm going to put pressure again. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Oh, sorry, I'm not sure if you can hear the pencil screeching the paper, but if you can, then you can clearly notice the difference now because I'm adding too much pressure to my pencil. And all these dust, they are flying out of the paper. That's it. The pencil is blunt again. I'm going to sharpen both the yellow and the green ones. Oh, um, this happened. Let's just ignore that. So it's always better to keep a box like this next to you just for this purpose because you'll be sharpening a lot. And every time if you run to the dustbin, then it's a time a waste of time. So have a box like this or any tray with a sharpener so that you can sharpen your pencils whenever you want without running to the dustbin. Now, I'm going to go to the transition area. This time, 
again not too much pressure just a little bit pressure just a little not too much and as you can see the colors are getting intense now that's what we want just a little bit pressure not too much as i told you too much pressure in the transition area is not going to work so just a little bit more pressure it and now for the lower area for the green just a little bit pressure not too much as before but a little bit pressure I'm not burnishing anything right now. If you watch my videos, I would have talked about burnishing a lot. And burnishing is nothing but applying too much pressure to your pencil. Just like I did here. That's burnishing. I had applied a lot of pressure to my pencil straight away. That is burnishing. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm just applying a little bit pressure. Not too much. Not too little. But just enough to lock the pencils in. That's it. Not too much. Now, I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time what I'm going to focus on is creating a nice blend. So this, this region is actually kind of grainy, so I want to fill that out. So I'm adding a layer of orange now. Now, since this region is actually completely filled with the pencil, you can see a lot of dust coming out. And now I'm going to apply too much pressure to my pencil, the yellow color, and I'm going to blend it. I'm adding too much pressure now. I'm, I'm burnishing right now. Even though the pencil is blunt, I don't care at this point of time because the grains are already filled. So there's no grains to fill, but I have to smoothen the pencils. And as I told you, we can go however farther you want with a lighter color so i'm gonna go a little bit up into the orange just just to make sure that the grains are filled and i'm gonna do the same thing again adding pressure to my pencil now and i'm just going in to the orange to the green a little bit more
and I'm just adding pressure and I'm just spilling out all the grains in the yellow region. Going up with pressure. And we are almost done. And I'm done. So we blended orange, green, and yellow together in today's tutorial. And that's it. Thank you all so much for joining. A lot of you joined. Thank you. Thank you, Pratisha. Thank you, Divya. Thank you, Amru Gopi. Thank you, Chandrakant. Thank you, Sanjana Garg. Thank you, Priyankshu Sharma. Thank you, Amarnath. Thank you, Pragati. You're always changing your name, Pragati. Thank you, Arimeter. Arimeter, Arimeter. Um, I don't know how to spell it right. Thank you, Chandrakant. Yeah, the blending is smooth now, and that's because I used a lot of pressure in my final layer. That's why it's smooth now. Thank you. So any of you have any questions, you can ask me. Draw a picture. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll draw a picture in my next slide. And that will take a lot of time than this one. So if you're patient, then I'll definitely do one. How to mix skin color? To mix the skin colors, mix different um, types of skin color. Is that what you're asking? Skin tones. The stream will end in just a few minutes. I'm just answering the questions. Once I'm done with that, the stream is done. Okay, fine. I'll do a live next time for a skin color, how to mix different skin tones. And my age, I'm well over 25. So any other questions about today's today's thing, today's tutorial? Do you have any questions? An art teacher? No, I'm not an art teacher. I just learned these things by myself watching YouTube videos and practice. Amru Gopi, thank you, <laughs> thank you. So let's let's end our live stream then.
Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So I'm going to end it now and I'll see you in my next video. All right. I hope I made everything clear. I hope you could uh, follow along with me. I hope I conveyed everything that I wanted to. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for this live, for this live stream. Thank you all so much. And bye. I'm going to end it now. Can you make a realistic eye with color pencils? Yeah, sure. I'll definitely do a video about it, but not live stream because that's going to take uh, around three or four hours if I do a live stream um, drawing a realistic eye. So I'll do a video about it. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Sandrakant. Thank you. So, bye everybody. Take care. Have a good night. Yeah, have a good night. Bye.